Hey, what is going on guys? Coming back at you with round or top four, not round four, uh Virginia Roanoke Regionals. Um we got Jimmy Vendarvis versus Franco. Uh Jimmy playing as we just saw in the last round. Guardy Swampert, so Galio, Squad, uh Nine Tails, and then we got Franco coming in with Z D T, uh Zorak, Desi Tails. Um so this matchup I do think is pretty favored for Guardy. Um it's not unwinnable for Franco, but I do think it's just strictly favored for the guardy side the pokemon are just bigger hit harder um and then have the max versions as follow-ups um and even though franco does play some healing on his own side um he's not able to one-shot stuff like the way uh jimmy's deck can so yeah definitely favor the guardy player in this matchup um i think it's just strictly favored for the guardy player uh, so we do have jimmy going first we do have jimmy going first uh has the raw elm Looks like Volpix, Rolts, expect, yep, Mudkip. Um, see if he's got anything else <clears throat> going on. Uh, Jimmy could actually, like, just start knocking out stuff with Lele here to start with. Um, at least we got the Raw Elm from Franco as well. Um, <clears throat> so both players will get off to a decent start. Opening the Volpix is definitely very nice for Franco as well. Opening Lele, not so good on Jimmy's side. Um, I kind of expect him to just attach the Fairy Active and pass. Um, because he can set up so the Lele can actually just knock out the Vulpix. Yeah, there we go. Attach the Fairy Active. He even has the DC in hand, so he's, like, ready to go on that front. Um, pass over to Franco. Mm -hmm. I think I saw an Elm in Franco's hand. Um, well, maybe not. He has, he's coming out with the Ultra Ball. Yeah, it's a Cynthia. Getting rid of a DCE. And, yeah, I think definitely the Enhanced Hammer. I don't know if I would have kept the... Fairy Energy there as Franco, but I guess he can go into, like, a turn to... Uh, fairy plus counter gain. So I kind of like that, yeah. So we should see Zerua, uh, Rowlet, Ditto. And if there's no Ditto, a second Vulpix. Yeah, but there's the Ditto. <coughs> Excuse me. There is the Ditto. And I definitely like keeping the choice band on Franco's side. The Enhanced Hammer is, like, okay in the matchup, but it's actually, like, not that great consistently. Um, so I'm definitely fine with him discarding the Enhanced Hammer there. Everything comes to the bench. Maybe Fairy Energy to the benched Ditto is the way to go. DC to Zerua also works. Yeah, I like that. As long as Counter Gain is in the deck, he's going to take another look through him, see if I can spot the Counter Gain. Um, yeah, there's a Counter Gain. He's going in with the Beacon. So it looks like it's, it'll probably be Zork and um, <clears throat> Ninetales here, I would imagine. Um, yep, there it is. And if this Vulpix does get knocked out, I definitely want to see uh, Franco go into the Ninetales and start using uh, Snowy Wind. Um, with the counter gain get use out of that while you can at some point you just won't be able to so definitely want to see him get value out of the Counter gain while he can uh, Jimmy gets ultra ball timer ball uh, So he probably has a right candy in hand um, see what the timer ball gives him one tails and Two tails so unfortunate there from Jimmy, but he does have the ultra ball still so it shouldn't be the biggest setback ever um, I end up getting rid of ooh interesting. All right. We'll see what he gets rid of here it goes with DCE Fairy Energy. Okay. Um, so that's a lot to lose on the first turn. Gets the Swampert. Has Ray Candy in hand, I'm sure. Um, has another Fairy in hand. I'm not sure what he's going to go with here then. He might just not knock out this Vulpix with the Lele. Although I kind of like it. Um, just pressure your opponent. The, the Lele isn't really in any threat of being knocked out. Um, there's Candy Swampert. Um... And then the trade. He has another red candy in hand. Okay, so there's the red candy guardy. Um, see, I'm curious as to why he got rid of the. Oh, he does he have another DCE in hand? He's gonna go DCE to guardy, super strength to guardy, Cynthia. All right, so I guess he's gonna retreat. Yeah, retreat and swing with guardy. That way, the guardy can just kind of one shot the next thing as well. Um, and then from there, he's hoping to just set up uh, another guardy. And this guardy is just gonna probably go down. He could max potion it and reset it if he draws the max potion and more energy. Um, we'll see what he goes with here. Um, six off the Cynthia. Definitely wants to see another Ralts. Yeah, so he's just committing to the Guardi knockout, and then the Guardi will be able to just KO whatever Franco sends up. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be the Ditto, and I expect Franco to go into the counter gain plus, uh, <clears throat> Nine Tails. And actually, he drew an Elm, so I wouldn't hate to see him just play the Elm for the turn. And, um, just establish another Rowlet and probably another Zerua. So I think that's what I want to see here from from Franco. Um, he's going in with the le the Nine Tails. There's the counter game. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't hate to see him just grab something to trade away or just get another, search out something else off the Elm to trade away. Thinking about Counter Catcher, thinking about Timer Ball. Timer Ball, I think I like the most here. 
Um, I don't really want to see him counter catch or anything up. He has to deal with this guardy. Yeah, do not want to see him counter catch or anything up. Um, I'm fine with the choice man to the Zorak. And then goes with the Cynthia. I think I would have just liked to have seen him Elm. Uh, maybe get a uh, item off the Lele to tr uh, the Nine Tails to trade away, or get a Pokemon off the Elm to trade away. Just get another Rowlet. Like, what do you even want besides another Rowlet and another Zerua? Yeah, I really don't like this play from Franco at all. Actually, like if you think about it, what do you want besides uh, another Rowlet and another Zerua in this current position? If you Cynthia, what are you looking for? Rowlet and Zerua, right? So I really actually don't like that play from Franco. He definitely should have just played the Elm and then traded after the Elm. Either getting a thing, uh, basically one off the Elm to trade away, or getting a item off of the Ninetales Mysterious Guidance to trade away. Um, so yeah, not a huge fan of of that Cynthia from Franco. But we're locked into the Cynthia now. He finds an Ultra Ball. Uh, should trade before the Ultra Ball. Once again, not a fan of him Ultra Balling before the trade. Because um, if you ultra, if you trade into the Rowlet, then you can Ultra Ball for a Zerua, and you also get more ultra options to Ultra Ball away. Um, I don't think he's traded yet, unless I'm missing something here, which is possible. You see, now he has to trade away the Counter Catcher, and you don't. Why would you want to trade away the Counter Catcher? Like that's you're going to be behind in this game for so long, you might want to be able to utilize that. I'm sure you might still Ultra Ball it away, but why don't you just trade away the Elmer, the Macargo first, get more options for the Ultra Ball, possibly draw into the Rowlet, and then Ultra Ball for a Zerua. So uh, more sequencing errors here from Franco. There's the trade though, and it's gonna be the Snowy Wind. I actually want to see the 30 on the. So he puts the 30 on the Lele. I actually kind of maybe it's too it's too far in the game to ever chase the Swampert anymore. Hmm. I want to hate to see the 30 on the Swampert so you can like. No, you don't have the Counter Catcher anymore. 30s on Lele, so you can get clean up. Yeah, 30 on Lele. I guess is the best play at this point to clean it up. But the current position that he's put himself in, 30 on the Lele, um, is best. But yeah, I don't like the. Those last couple plays from Franco, um, definitely sloppy. Uh, we see an immediate power draw here from Jimmy. Um, all Jimmy really needs here is basic Pokemon, so I'm not a huge fan of him discarding the Elm unless he has another Elm in hand. Because um, literally all he needs here is like a Ralts and a Mudkip on Jimmy's side. So this is Cynthia. Oh, he's got the Guzma. Okay. Brings up a Rowlet. Maybe he can attack here with the uh, Ninetales. That'd be a great attack to pull off here from Jimmy. Yeah, he's got two Fairy in the hand. So I don't hate him. I mean, I don't I can't see his full hand. So I don't know how much I like discarding the uh, the elm Mid game elms are actually pretty good commits goes with committing the DCE interesting So he's down to one DCE left even though he has a fairy in hand. He goes with the DCE attachment um, It does allow him to move his nine tails out of the active and keep a fairy in play, which is nice um, so he goes KO Rowlet 30 on the Rowlet, I actually don't like this 30 on the Rowlet. You're almost never going to chase a Decidueye. This this will probably become a Decidueye next turn. I would play as if this was going to become a Decidueye next turn. So from Jimmy, I would like to have seen him put the 30 probably on the Ninetales, soften it up, make it easier for the Guardian to knock out on the next turn. Um, so yeah, not a huge fan of this 30 damage. It should, I think it should have been on the Z Zorak or the Ninetales. Probably the Ninetales, I think. Um, and you're already now that you're at even prizes, you just want to map out your prizes as Ninetales plus Zorak. Um, so yeah, I don't like that. That 30 damage from the snowy wind from Jimmy. Um, Cause I, I mean, I would assume at this point that I think Frank will be able to pull off at least one candy decision on his next turn. You know, maybe not, but. Um, so immediate Cynthia here from Franco. <clears throat> Doesn't look like there's a candy decision in there. Might work out here in the end from Jimmy. To uh, shut off, to KO the Rowlet. Now he can pressure the other Rowlet, so uh, <clears throat> might be working out fine here from Jimmy. Ultra Ball, Ultra Ball on Elm. And this is what I mean at this point. Like, this is what I was talking about when I said I think Franco should just use that Elm on his second turn and fill up his bench. He has spent the last two turns chasing basic Pokemon. Like, he keeps having to Ultra Ball just to get basic Pokemon. He could have already had all this set up and ready to go. But instead, he's out here chasing basic Pokemon. Uh, goes for another Rowlet here. Uh, this sets up very nice for Jimmy to go Guzma KO both these Rowlets now. Um, I mean, it could be the same thing with any basic Pokemon and then have him go down to two prizes. Um, so if Jimmy does have Guzma uh, way to retreat, I think that's definitely the play we'll see here from Jimmy is Guzma up the Rowlet and KO both Rowlets and then go down to two prizes. And maybe even Max Potion the Guardy. Um, and protect it so that he can't go. I mean, I don't, I don't I doubt Franco would be able to mention a Pokemon to go Guzma. Yeah, there it is. Bring up the Rowlet. There's nothing really Franco could have done about this, I don't think. Um, bring up the Guardi. Retreat the Guardi. I wouldn't be surprised if he Max Potion the Guardi as well if he has it, but it's 
not super necessary. Yeah, just go ahead, heal it up, make sure it can't be KO'd, and you should be able to lock up the game from there as Jimmy. Yeah, KO2, Rowlets, go down to two prizes. No Rowlets, no Decidueyes in play for Franco. Um... I mean, I guess I hate the 30 damage there a little bit less um, when Jimmy put it on the rally because he knows that Franco has to bench. Now, I guess so. I guess Jimmy was right in the snow. He went to put the 30 on the rally because you know Franco has to bench more Pokemon, and his hand was set up. I mean, I can't always I can't seize Jimmy's full hand, but his hand was set up to go Guzma. Um, his hand was set up to go with Guzma and then knockout, knockout. So, um, I guess I do like that 30 damage on the rally there from Jimmy because he knows he has to bench more Pokemon. He knows he has the Guzma in hand and can pull off that play. Um, so it just ends up, it works out. Um, now over to Franco. He sends up the nine tails again, which I don't like. If I was Franco, I would just commit to being like, okay, I'm going to drop a basic Pokemon and Jimmy's going to whip the knockout on my Zorok. Send up the Zorok, Zorok, knock this out. Um, <clears throat> but nope, he sticks with this. He doesn't even find enough basic Pokemon anyways. So this ends up working out a little bit better, I guess. Is the active 30 on the Guardi. Uh, Jimmy gets Brooklyn Hill, activates it. There's the Mudkip. Yep, Mudkip comes down. I see Marsh Stomp in the deck. Um, no, I take it back. I still don't like it, the play where he... I'm, I'm going back and back. I'm still rethinking through the process. When he put the 30 on the, the Rowlet, you should still play as if that's going to become a Decidueye, I feel like. So you shouldn't put the 30 damage there. He kind of just lucked out that Franco just still has yet to hit Candy Decidueye. Um, yeah, so I still don't like the 30 damage. I would like to have seen it soften up the Ninetales or soften up the Zorak still. Uh, it did end up working out in the end, but... but yeah. All right. Making a big Guardi. Jimmy needs two prizes. Uh, the Guardi cannot be knocked out next turn by Franco. So Jimmy can kind of put as much as, commit as much as he wants onto the Guardi. Um, probably just use his Ninetales, soften up the active Ninetales, soften up the Zorak. And then Guardi will come in and clean up on that following turn. Jimmy has one Guzma left, so he should be able to chase one of them down. Um, he's going to have power draw, uh, plus potentially two power draws on the next turn. So he should be able to find everything he needs. Um, there's the Ultra Ball. I assume this will be for Candy Soul Galio. Um, nope, it's gonna get the Marsh Stomp. I was expecting the Candy Solgaleo, but, uh, not yet. I thought I saw a red candy in his hand, uh, but maybe I missed it. Uh, so he's just gonna go with the Marsh Stomp. Uh, it's gonna be a snowy win, I assume, to set up the Nine Tails on the Zork. Um, gets rid of the Ditto. He just throws it off, away off screen over to the outside. Okay, there's the Candy Solgaleo. I was a little bit behind, but he did, it does end up getting it eventually. Um, if he has a DC here, he wins the game. Uh, if not, it'll go on a little bit longer, but I'm sure Jimmy is going to close this one out. <clears throat> yeah. Snowy Wind. Soft, yep. Soften up the, the Ninetales. Soften up the Zork. Uh, should be... Oh, that die. I just can't see that gray die there on the uh, Ninetales. It is 70. Second Zork comes down. Um, Franco needs a way to move his active here. Can't really see what his hand, what his hand is for the trades. To nothing great there. I'd like to see him play the timer ball. Burn through that. He's just going with the trade immediately. I like to see him play that. If he's going to commit to trading the Zork, you should play the timer ball first and thin out your deck. Um, now it has to be DCE retreat the uh, Nine Tails stretcher should be for a Rowlet. Yep, there it is. DC retreat Nine Tails into. Oh, maybe not. He's going to go with Guzma. Okay, Guzma ramp already hit it. That also works. I'm fine with that. Hope Jimmy doesn't have enough stuff to. Knock out your Zorak. Jimmy needs DCE Fairy. <clears throat> Definitely has it left. Super Boost also works. So we'll see what he's able to find here. Definitely should get rid of the Brooklyn Hill, I think, with the Power Dot. Yeah. That's not a Super Boost. Uh, but still in a good spot for Jimmy no matter what. Even if he isn't able to get the knockout here. Franco still has six prizes to draw, so that's going to be tough for Franco to get to even. Um, Ultra Ball here from Jimmy. The Super Boost is in there. He's going to grab a Guardi. I don't think he has a way to set up the Guardi, though. Um, ends up taking nothing. Okay. Lily, looking for the Super Boost. Four don't think he hit it oh no he did there we go <laughs> super boost imminent force knockout so we do see jimmy taking this game game one um i think it was played uh, actually pretty sloppily on franco's side the elm um specifically i think was like a huge turning point where it just from that point on he was just struggling to set up pokemon 
all he had to do on his second turn was go elm and get the, the bench pokemon all, all all he was looking for off that cynthia was bench pokemon so why not just play the elm instead of the cynthia um so i think that play right there just really set franco super far behind from turn two like just going from turn two on it was just like well uh i can't uh i can't keep up anymore i don't have pokemon um and what was he looking for off the cynthia pokemon so just play the elm get the pokemon um so i think yeah uh sloppy there from game one uh from franco but let's hope he can clean it up a little bit this time we have franco opening with the tapu lele uh jimmy with the mudkip there's the elm from franco we got ditto zarua rowlet uh makes sense i don't think there's really anything else anything else to get looking at the hand he's got the fairy energy for the turn one attachment uh, i definitely want to see him be, and, and in this matchup or against Gardevoir in general, you kind of just want to be aggressive about KOing the Mudkips and the Marsh Stomp and the Swampert uh, in general. So yeah, I want to see, yeah. Attachment to the active, give yourself an option to retreat to a Zorak, have it KO the Mudkip, or just go DC active, KO the Mudkip, which is a little bit risky. You probably don't want to do that, but um, yeah. I like the attachment active, give yourself some mobility, give yourself some options on the next turn, or increase your options on the next turn. Could have attached to the Ditto and gone for potentially attacking with Nine Tails. The only thing is, I don't think Franco plays a Switch card or any mobility card, like an Escape Board, Switch, Escape Rope, whatever. Um, so when his active is active, it's stuck there unless he wants to Guzma around it. But Guzma turn two and having something efficient to do usually doesn't happen. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely the play to go here from Franco, I think. Uh, we see Jimmy has the Elm. Um, I expect Ditto Vulpix Rolts uh, from Jimmy here. Want to make sure? Okay, he goes with the Cosmog actually instead. Um, you definitely want to play like your Vulpix is gonna get, get knocked out. Oh, he goes with Mudkip, Mudkip, Ralts, Vulpix. I actually think this old Galio is a little bit better to get early on. Well, not with the way Franco's currently setting up. Then the, the Guardi is definitely better. Uh, so he goes Mudkip, uh, Ralts, Vulpix. So if this Vulpix is knocked out, he has no access to Nine Tails. So this make this makes me believe that he actually has Candy Swampert in hand, or where Candy in hand and is then gonna beacon into Swampert. Um, I think that's what we're going to see here from Jimmy. Oh. All right. It's attached to Ralts pass instead. So no beacon. So that means he probably has nine tails in hand. He's, tr he's trying to definitely protect the Vulpix. That's what we're seeing here. Um, timer ball from Franco. One heads. Looks like he has an Elmon Ultra Ball in hand. We definitely want to see the Decidueye get set up here. Looks like he's eyeing up the Macargo. Uh, which is definitely better overall than putting a nine tails in play. So I don't hate this, but it only depends if the rest of his hand really works really well with that. Um, and it looks like it works decently well. He can grab the Macargo Ultra Ball for Zork, and then play Cynthia. Um, so actually, I like this from Franco. Um, and then you just need one of the two pieces of the Decidueye to set up the Decidueye in the following turn. Thinking. I mean, playing Elmless turn. It, Playing Elmas here is okay, but you really want to pressure. So um, I think you keep the choice band here as Franco over the Acerola because you have to find ways to like two shot the Guard Force. Yeah, I don't like this. Um, so in this matchup, J Jimmy is looking to one shot Franco's Pokemon um, or like soften them up with the Ninetales first and then then clean them up with a Guardi. But ideally, Jimmy just wants to like keep one shotting everything with Guardi. Um, so Acerola doesn't do a whole ton. Uh, in the matchup, potentially, whereas Choice Band, you always need ways to, like, get more damage in play and, like, one-shot Guardies, clean up Lele's, uh, knock out Ninetales, stuff like that. So I don't like him keeping the Acerola here. I would rather have seen him keep the, um, Choice Band, discard the Acerola. There we go. Six off the Cynthia. Vulpix down is okay. Um smooth over probably gonna be for a dce here i definitely want to see him be aggressive about KOing this mudkip i think he went for a rare candy though we'll see maybe he has dc in hand i know he has a decidueye in hand trade the elm dc oh no he went for the dc okay i thought he went for a rare candy but yeah we're good yeah get, get rid of this mudkip don't let jimmy set up two swampers there's no way you win the game if two swampers get in play uh jimmy pushes the rolts <clears throat> ideally wants to knock this thing out but that's a gonna be a tall order i think uh, Ultra Ball getting rid of a Choice Band, so that's also going to hurt his chances of getting the knockout. Uh, let me see at the Nine Tails first. There we go, Nine Tails, Rare Candy. I assume Timer Ball, but we'll see. It's going to be Choice Band. Okay, so he gets another Choice Band. Got the Rare Candy Guardy, Choice Band active. Cynthia. Um, no real way for him to get the um, 
Swampert setup. You ideally want to set up Swampert, but you don't want to risk it on the Tyrant Ball. This this play seems fine here. If he gets DCE uh fairy he gets a knockout on the zork and that might be the end of the game actually right there if jimmy's able to hit that combo of uh dce uh fairy energy uh, i don't see it in hand currently there's a timer ball i see a red candy in his hand so this is swampert if he gets a heads there you go here comes swampert there he is candy swampert about to happen into the power draw looking for dc and fairy energy um, but if, even if jimmy doesn't hit that combo this turn he's still in a great spot um, this is like the spot where you want to be in this matchup as the Guardi player. This is more than fine. Uh, power draw away in Elm. Got a Fairy, but no DCE it looks like. Got a Ralts though, which is great. Set up another, uh, Gardevoir. Thinking about Ultra Balling, I'm not sure what he would grab here. Uh, probably a Mudkip, I guess. He has another Swampert in hand, so he wants the option of that. Um, uh, if the Mudkip's in the deck, um... Oh, Cosmog works too. Setting up Solgaleo is really good in this matchup as well. Yeah, so go for the Solgaleo. And then we should just see him go ahead and hit the Zorark for... What is it? 120. Setting up a two-shot. Um, the ideal situation is you one-shot it, but, you know, you can't have it all. Yeah, so 120 here from Jimmy. Onto the Zorark. And then over to Franco. So Franco does have the Ace of Roll in hand, so it looks like he will be able to actually utilize it. Uh, on this turn if he wants to. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have another Zeru in play to bounce the Zorark onto uh, and get another trade out of it. Um, so we see Franco starting here with the Nine Tails. I think I would like to see him... Well, no, he's got the Macargo, so we can smooth over on the trade, I guess. Uh, definitely want to see a Decidueye get set up here. Um, and I think we just want to see him then hit the Ace of Roll, the active Zorark, and then hit the... Uh, Double tails off the timer ball from Franco. That's gonna be rough. Uh, just hit the hit the active guardy with a lele. Actually, I think is what I want to see here from Franco. Um, so I think smooth over to Sidui. Um, let's see if I want to smooth over Zork. Okay, I think he he switched it to a Sidui. I hope he switched it to a Sidui. I don't know why he would smooth over for a Zork here. Trade. Yeah, definitely trade away that nine tails. You don't need that anymore. Yeah, you might potentially want it, but it's not a huge deal. Candy Decidueye. And then I would like to see him Acer roll the active Zorark, and then just attack with... Uh... It looks like he's thinking eyeing up the Cynthia. I would just Acer roll the active Zorark, and then hit with the Lele into the Guardi. I think he has the Acer roll in hand. I'm almost positive he drew it. Yep, there we go. Um, so he's going with the Acer roll, which means he shouldn't have attached the counter gain to the nine tails yet, but um, it's not a huge deal. We'd definitely like to have seen another Zerua, but with that timer ball heads, like if he had hit the timer ball heads, I would like to have seen him smooth over a Zerua, I think for sure. Um, and then pings the active, um, and then hits. So he's setting up the two shot pretty, pretty much on the guardy here. The two shot is pretty much being set up. Um, so we'll have to see what Jimmy's response is uh, here to this. Uh, knocking out the Lele isn't super difficult, but then it's like, to see what he would, he would either heal the guardy or just get the knockout. I think ideally he would like hit this with. Uh, What's it called? So Galio. Uh, there's the power draw. The hand doesn't look. It looks like it's a lot of energy. Maybe a max potion's in there. And if there is a max potion, then he could heal it. Nope. Looks like he's just gonna commit the energy and attack. Um, I would like to see him at least secret spring. Yeah, to a Ralts or the Nine Tails. Goes with the Ralts here. I think the Nine Tails might be a little safer. He doesn't have candy guard. He has the candy in hand, so he thinks he's gonna find the guardian next turn. Okay, so that works. Knockout. So Rua sent up here from Franco. So Franco really needs to try and get this knockout here. This knockout is a big deal, and I think we'll just see the Cynthia. Um, so I think he needs to find DC. What is it? DC Choice Band. He needs DC and Choice Band, um, and then plus the Feather Arrow will knock out the Guardi. He discarded the Choice Band. This is he discarded the Choice Band on turn, but I guess it's between the Choice Band and the what's it called? Oh, he also needs a Bench Pokemon. He finds neither, so I don't think he's going to be able to get the knockout this turn, because he can only smooth over for DC or Choice Band, not both. Um, should see the Ultra Ball here from Franco. Going to get us a rule here with this card in the Sid that is Sidui for sure. I'm almost positive he's going to get us a rule here. Yeah, he really needs Oryx. Um, Got to keep drawing cards. Um, now this is like really awkward for Franco on what he's going to grab. Um... Going with the choice band, yeah, I think he's going to try and trade into both here. So he's hoping he finds the DCE uh, off the second card of the trade because he has more DCEs left than choice band. And I'm actually fine with this play at this point because of how far behind he is in the game if he doesn't get this knockout. 
um trade choice band no dce i mean it's it's a tall order to ask for um we should just see feather arrow active pass yeah unfortunately that is the case i actually think the feather arrow so because the choice band dc sets up the knockout already with a feather arrow from next turn i think this feather arrow should go on to like this ralts or the cosmog um because if he, now if jimmy max potions is active uh it removes 20 extra damage than it should so this this feather arrow should be on one of the bench pokemon because you can always feather arrow next turn and you still have the same play of the choice band dce um, so this feather arrow should be on one of the bench pokemon the ralts or the cosmog i think uh power draw here from jimmy there's a max potion, so we'll probably actually see that come out on the active Guardi this turn. Um, if he can't one-shot it. Oh, uh, actually, he can one-shot it, I think. I think I see DC and Fairy in the his hand. So he could go for the one-shot here, which I think is actually probably fine. Um, see what he's eyeing up here. He's got a lot of options. His hand is really big. Eyeing up the Ultra Ball, it looks like. Ultra Ball's away. Lily Fairy uh, gets the Soul Galio. He could also just, like... Retreat into the Soul Galio and then attack with Soul Galio for the turn. Get the energy back up. Reset up the Gardevoir GX after max potion it. Um, so yeah, a lot of options here from Jimmy. He could also knock out the active Zorak, like I said. If he has DCE Fairy, which I think he does. This is even better, though. Candy Soul Galio. And he has the Guzma, which means he can still get two prizes on the turn. And then uh, <clears throat> establish a second... Uh, Guardy, yeah, you got four energy on a Curlia here, three energy, and a choice band on the Guardvor. So he's basically got two Guardvors, potentially two Guardvors that can just one shot any of Franco's attackers. So Franco is in uh, quite a bad spot here. Yeah, this is definitely the play to go from from Jimmy if he's got the Guzma, and he does have the Guzma. Um, allows him to like fully set up, pretty much checkmate Franco. Franco's best play here is to knock out the Guardy with a hundred on it and hope Jimmy can't find another Guardy. Um, um, or is it better to knock out the curly and hope he can't find another energy? I guess it depends on what's in his discard pile. Um, I'm pretty sure Jimmy has the game locked up either way. He'll be able to find a guardy or an energy. Um, yeah, just not looking good here from Franco. Um, there's a judge. All right, judge is a good step. And now I think Franco has to find uh, DCE counter catcher. And then he has to decide which one to KO. Um, I would like, as Franco here, I'd like to see him look through Jimmy's discard pile and figure out what he thinks Jimmy will have more likely be able to have access to the energy or the guard vor. Um, I see an ultra ball in Jimmy's hand, so we know he's got access to the guard vor. Um, oh no, I guess on the on the curly, he would need energy and a guard vor. So you definitely always knock out the guard vor every time here. Um, I thought there was enough energy on the curly, but there's not. So yeah, we definitely want to see Franco go knock out. Does he have counter catcher left? If he has counter catcher left or it's not prized. Um, and he hasn't discarded it yet, so it's either in the deck or or prized. Um, so I definitely want to see if, if Franco does have the access to the counter catcher. I want to see him go counter catcher, knock out the benched uh, guardy. Definitely want to see him go counter catcher, knock out the benched guardvor, because um, the curlier court requires two pieces anyways. It needs a choice band or an energy and the guardvor, whereas guardvor just needs an energy. So there's a trade. Shut your candy. There's the counter catcher, but he didn't put the counter catcher on top. Um, so I don't, I don't think he had that play in mind at all. Um, he put the stretcher on top, and luckily drew into the counter catcher, but goes for the curlier. So this is just a mistake here from Franco, because the curlier needs guardvor plus energy, whereas guardvor just needs an energy to knock out his active zork. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It needs seven. Uh, total says four, five, six. So this would need a guardvor, and then an energy, whereas guardvor just needs. An energy so maybe unless he has a field blower in hand um this makes sense uh, but i don't think he does so this doesn't this play just actually makes no sense here from franco yep there's the knockout on the curlia uh jimmy's counting up the energy on guard for i'm pretty sure that means he has an energy in hand you can always set up so galio first as jimmy just to be safe until you draw there's a cynthia top deck um so probably like to see jimmy uh power draw here first would be fine you can go lele take out a supporter and then uh power draw um depending on how many cards you have in hand before the cynthia sometimes makes sense um yep there's a power draw there's a like i said if if it had gone if franco had played it the other way and ko the guard board then jimmy wouldn't just need an energy he would need energy guard for i think jimmy had it anyways with the ultra ball in hand i'm pretty sure he had an ultra ball in hand um so i think jimmy had this game pretty much locked up no matter what um but yeah that's gonna go ahead and do it for the top four match uh little sloppy on franco's side for sure game one i think 
I think Franco pretty much lost game one right when he didn't use the Elm on turn two. Um, to just his board wasn't established yet, and he, then he chose just not to Elm and establish his board. And then he was, instead he was like, play Cynthia, hope I find basic Pokemon. Um, so I think Franco pretty much lost the game on that on turn two in game one. Uh, here he made a couple mistakes as well. Um, not quite as bad as game one, but I think there was still some stuff that could have been done a little bit cleaner. It is a tough matchup for Franco, no matter what, and I don't think him... Uh, maybe in game one, if he had Elmed instead of Cynthia, I could have definitely seen him taking that game. Here in game two, I don't think there was much hope at all, even with the slight mistakes made. Um, it's just uh, Jimmy's game for sure. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for top four. If you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a like if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, follow me on Twitter. Check out my live stream on Twitch. Links for those in the description below. Uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.